Hello everyone, this is the Beta FPV Lite 2 Radio. Yes, this has been around a while. It takes me a while to get these things done. I'm not in a rush looking for views or first day, first afternoon. So I've been flying this around. I bound up not only these two quads, but oops, I've forgotten to get out the D16 one that I've gotten. I have a D16 quad that I also flew. And uh, so this is a game style controller sort of uh, radio. Not too much different than this. This is an old Xbox 360 controller. Where's the other one here? Okay, and then we've got a PlayStation controller we can look at as well. Hopefully you can see that. They they all have a similar flight a feel to them. They all have that game style or, you know, obviously these are game controllers. But it's something similar. Now, I use the X-Lite, and many of you know that. And you might be wondering why I don't recommend that anymore. And I've said it a few times. I don't want to beat anybody over the head with it. But it's because of what FR Sky is doing with their firmware and also their receivers. They're kind of locking everybody who gets a new radio out of being able to use D8 mode. And that's where this comes to play. So this does D8 mode and D16 mode out of the box. It's very, very simple. It has a one-page front and back instruction sheet. Uh, you can also use this as a simulator. I plugged it into my computer, and it does, does recognize it as a human interface device. And uh, it's, it's really dead simple. They've got just a few switches up here on top. The switches feel fine. I think the thing that stands out the most about the feel is whatever this paint coating stuff is almost feels like not a hard material, almost as though it's soft. It's kind of smooth, but yet it's very tactile. You can see here on the edges that this has kind of a texture to it, making it a little bit easier to grip a hold of. Uh, this is our USB port. Then that's our trainer port, I believe, up there. And then we've got our switches, two position, two position, two position, three position switches right there. And then our battery comes in right here. If I can get this off quickly, it's a little 350 milliamp battery. It doesn't last a long time. So I would encourage you, if you're not planning to fly the next pack to go ahead and turn the radio off. Now we got our two buttons here and that's pretty much how we operate it outside of the power. Set up and bind, you use the power button and the set up and bind buttons in order to be able to switch modes on the radio to fly D18 or D, excuse me, to be able to fly D8 or D16. It's all described fairly well here inside the manual. I really didn't have any problems. It has uh, the LED status, this little ring, let's just turn this on. The the vibrator on this is one of the things that I would say is chin chintzy. For $39, I'm not complaining about it too much, but let's listen to it. See, it just kind of sounded loose in there. It didn't give you that voot, voot. It gave you a <laughs> Anyways, so we've got the blue LED, and you saw when I was pressing it, it was green. You do long press to turn it on and turn it off. So, vroom, vroom, it's turning on, vroom, it's turning off. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, blue flash slowly, uh, the battery is low. Green system is loading, that's when we pressed on the button. Red, throttle stick or switches and not in the lowest position. So that's really the basics of it. Binding is kind of a three-step process that they have laid out here. Um, you make sure that the transmitter is on. You press the bind button from the back of the transmitter for about 10, or you press the bind button and it'll last about 10 seconds for binding, indicated by the blue and red flashing alternately. And then you get your uh, receiver, possibly your receiver is already in binding mode. So really simple radio. And it's one of those things that I think if, I think it fits two different categories. One, it's way better than Emacs's entry level radio, way better. And two, it kind of might work for more experienced pilots in sort of a go bag sort of scenario. So you're going to go out and you're going to grill a whoop, as I've seen people called it. You're going to take your backpack full of whoops out and you're going to go fly them somewhere. This allows you maybe to be more discreet with a smaller backpack or maybe you have some sort of special lunchbox you carry stuff in. This might fit just to give you some idea. 65 millimeter whoop sitting on top of it. That's about the size of it. I do find it just a touch small for me. I tend, I fly like this. I pinch or hybrid, whatever you want to call my style. This is how I grab the sticks, thumb on top, fingers on um, the vertical axis of the sticks. And it, it feels like I'm squeezing it between my hands a little bit more. And the sticks feel a touch low. I wish, 
it were just I wish there was just a little bit more of an extension on each one of these knobs or nubbins whatever you want to call them that I it for me this is personal opinion for me it would be a little bit better if it were just a little bit more and that has to do with the length of my fingers and the size of my palms so that's going to be very different for every person also if they could work in just to make this just a touch bigger I mean like five millimeter bigger and maybe three to five millimeters longer on these ends and then insert the smallest the cheapest screen that's you know just the monochrome sort of screen on here with a little tiny joystick or scroll wheel or button or whatever sort of mechanism they could work out with i think they could sell a load of these for 50 bucks and if they threw in a multi-module i think they could sell a lot they could use deviation on that as the software to run it they can use OpenTX. they can really do whichever Two of the main firmwares for multi-protocol multi -protocol modules that are out there are the Deviation and the OpenTX. So I think this is good for getting started, very good for getting started. There, There is, oh, I forgot, there is a difference in the stick tension. This does not have the ratcheting. If you're familiar with radios, they oftentimes have this metal bracket on the back, and I think it's made for planes or other sorts of flying. We don't tend to use it in quads, but this does not have that ratcheting in the back. But... The stick feel is different on the different sticks. This is much looser. It doesn't take as much pressure than this one does. And I don't know how I can demonstrate that. Yeah, I, I, I don't see a way I'm going to be able to demonstrate that. You're just going to have to trust me a little bit that this stick on mine is a little bit more loose. It's more closer to how I have my x light set up. And this stick is a little bit stiffer. And that was something I noticed right away on my first flight was, whoa, whoa, I can't hardly get under control. And and one of those things was just understanding that my stick tensioning was slightly different from what I expected and from one stick to another. So for a Gorilla Pack to go Gorilla Whooping or a Lunchbox to take with you to work so you can fly a micro around your workplace or just for starting out purposes at $39.99, which I think is the price the last I looked. Uh, pretty good value. I, I I don't think you would buy this and be unhappy unless there was something inherently wrong with it when it would arrive to you. And I would hope that that's a rarity. I did have one report, that, and I don't know if this person was trolling me or not, that they said that there was a physical difference between the radios that were sent to reviewers and the radios that were sent for retail purchases. So again, I don't know if that's trolling, but if you have any information about that that you can verify and you can link me to verifiable information, I would sure be interested because as far as I know, uh, I know that Kebab talked about his very positively, So, um, and I had a good experience with mine. I didn't have range problems. I flew all the way around the house like I would with my uh, normal x light. Uh, of course, I'm not a range guy, so uh, as far as the extents of comparing the range of this to some other radio, uh, that's just not what I do on this channel. But if you're interested in a great starter or lunchbox sort of controller, uh, I'll leave a link down in the video description down below. If you have any comments, questions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching. My camera mount doesn't allow me to show all four of these in the picture when I have it down on my desk, so I had to stand up, so you might be getting a little bit of the shaky cam here. But I wanted to give you an idea of the size of all four of these. x light, Old 360, PlayStation 4, Beta FPV Lite 2 Radio. Okay, that's all.